Yeah, now that now that we're now that we're done with the Nick Fuentes shit, let's let's move on to this video. This uh so this this was um I was talking I was watching uh a Destiny video the other day and he started talking about materialism and how he is now not a materialist anymore, which is good. He believes in he believes in immaterial things like the con like consciousness he thinks consciousness might be immaterial because we can't analyze it through scientific me or i guess we technically can through like psychology introspection those things but we can't analyze it materially like how we analyze physics how we analyze uh other sort of things there's a sort of distinction between the two um and because of that destiny or we'll, we'll get into his arguments for it but he says that he is no longer a materialist <laughs> now he has a lot of problems still. There's still a lot of fucking problems with his arguments. Uh, he still makes a lot of mistakes. Uh, but... It's better than before. I'll, I'll, actually, it's iffy. He's, he's, you see, his whole, his whole reasoning is purely, is pure skepticism. He's, it's pure skepticism. So let's, let's jump into it. Okay, I want you all to know that I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. I know how much you guys care about this, okay? I have become, I am no longer a materialist, okay? Or physicalist. I have moved over to the world of dualism. Yay! Join the fucking club, baby. Looking at reality. Looking at reality with us objectivists. Let's go. I believe now in the immaterial, okay? Which means... Who knows what's next? I might be religious in six months. Oh fuck no! Nah. See this. See this. This is the issue, doc. The the skepticism leads to religion. Skepticism leads to religion, guys. Don't be a fucking skeptic. If you don't believe knowledge is possible, the only people, the only people, the only correct answer is to turn to God. Because, I mean, God, God is to turn to faith because you can't know certain things through reason so you have to just have faith in certain things and if you believe that faith is okay you might believe in god you never know because there's no evidence for god there's no reason to believe in god Garrett, would you consider objectivists to be idealists uh probably not who who sent that oh daniel thanks bro thanks for the donation um Objectivists are not idealists because idealists cut off the body. They, they're it's pure. It, talk to pessimistic idealism, and you'll you'll understand idealism a little bit better. But it's sort of like they they think consciousness is the primary. They think consciousness is. They think ideas are primary. They think yeah. They think that the universe can't exist apart from like a subject, apart from a consciousness consciousness observing it, and that the universe is purely like ide ideas. Um, We're on a and there, there's a lot of problems with that, with idealism as such. We're on a wild train. No, they're not. I guess they are technically dualists, but they're they're very like primacy of consciousness. Um. Now, boys. I listened to Rem earlier. Rem has never convinced me off of anything related to materialism in my entire fucking life. Oh, this seems like fake ideology, all ideologies to replace a belief in God. Too bad a belief in God is another fake ideology. Life. He has really fucking weird ways Congrats. to get there. Destiny on reaching 100 million Thanks. Twitch views. Also, the subreddit reached 80,000 subscribers today. <clears throat> what Hog. convinced you? Um, I was thinking about my talk with Marty a lot. And, um... The thing that I kept thinking about was usually the reason why I believe in materialism or physicalism is that I think that every single thing that we can know comes from like two places. Um, one is that we have, um, so I don't know if I refer to this properly, but we have like a priori reasoning, okay? So like no, don't hit, don't say a priori. I know I know I know Destiny's position on this, and it's not terrible. But don't say a priori because we don't have logic built into us. We don't have reasoning built into us. It doesn't make sense to say that apart from observation of reality. We have to observe something first. We have to observe the law of identity before we can say, before we can use logic. We have to observe the fact that things aren't contradictory before we can say that 
we have to observe that things are what they are and have a certain identity before we can say that that's true. So saying a priori is is dangerous and it's very evasive of, of the fact that we need to look at reality first. We technically do have a reasoning structure. Our mind has a structure, it has a nature because everything is what it is. You can't say that a mind doesn't have a structure, it doesn't have a nature, everything has an identity if it exists. But there's no inbuilt knowledge, there's no a priori knowledge of anything. So when you talk about a priori, it's there's this sort of idea that comes with it that there's inbuilt knowledge, that we're not tabula rasa, which is not true at all. There's no there's no evidence for that. This is that by virtue of being a human being, there seems to exist some concepts in your mind that are just part of the human experience. So for instance, knowing that something is something, knowing that something can't both be and not be, knowing that things can't have contradictory properties, right? Something can't both be simultaneously blue and red. It can't be too exclusionary, right? These are just things that like are incomprehensible that we can't have these, right? So well, yeah, because they're so obvious. They're so, they're so obvious at the base of our observation. Now, but it, it's, it has to be something you observe first. You can't, you can't make that claim that things aren't contradictory unless you see things that are not contradictory. Um, you can't form that concept without it referring to something in reality. And that's, that's why, that's why logic is not a priori. It's a posteriori. Um, I think that's the right the right word. Um, just because you can't imagine it being some other way, doesn't mean that it's a priori that there's no other way it could possibly be or whatever. Um, it is like oh, this. This is this is. I could go into the whole analytic synthetic dichotomy, but I don't know if I could tie it very well in a very clear and coherent way um but yeah so logic is based on reality logic is based on experience so that that's how we form the idea of what logic is we see things that are not contradictory so we form the law of non-contradiction we can't form laws we can't f discover things prior to observation because there's no percepts that you refer to in that when you're thinking about that so we have that, and then we have, um, and then we have sense data. So yeah, independent of experience, these things. Yeah, and then we have like sense data. So I can see things, and then yeah, and then when you combine those two things, it seems like we can extrapolate the entirety of human experience out of those things. Um, so for instance, I have a blue wallet. Okay, that's like sense data gathered, and then it runs through my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also imagine what would, what it would be like to have like two blue wallets, or if I had two blue wallets and I added three blue wallets to it, I can envision five blue wallets. Even though I've never gathered that sense data, but I've never seen five blue wallets together at the same time. I've never seen that. But I, but, but yeah, that's true because we're, we're conceptual. We can form concepts and and um, use use like these concepts of ah oh, fucking use these like concepts of method that we can also form like addition. That that'd be a concept of method because we see that when we add certain things together, we get a certain amount of other things. So we can use these concepts, interact them together. Be this is this is deduction, interacting concepts in our head, and we know okay, like you go, you can go through a deductive syllogism here. I have two wall. I have two uh. I have two blue wallets. I add three more blue wallets. Addition has these properties. You can list all the properties that you know about addition. Addition works like this, and you can list that out. And from that, you can deductively form the idea, I have five wallets, or like two plus three additionally. That, 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 that would probably be the law of addition. Two plus three equals five. That's something that you can um, induce as well. So you, you add, so you have two wallets, add three wallets, Two plus three equals five. Therefore, deductively, I have five wallets now. So, yeah, that's how, that's kind of how deduction works. You form these concepts. You form concepts of method. You form concepts of existence, and from there we can discover true things. That that's purely in your head, and that's yeah, that that's how deduction would sort of work. But because I can reason it out, right? Because I can inference. Because I have all of these identity laws in my head, I can. <laughs> I love. I love how the the uh, the grapers are still here in the chat after I'm not talking about Nick Fuentes anymore. Oh man, maybe I can convince them that God's not real here. Like, figure that out. I can imagine that. So that was like my so my stance on like um, materialism before was like just that everything in the world I can explain like given some physical condition. But the problem I have 
that I've started to think a lot more about recently is I can't know. It's, it's kind of, we kind of dip into solipsism a little bit, okay? So solipsism is the idea that you might be the only conscious being and no one else is truly conscious. They just seem to be, right? They're, this, these are called like philosophical zombies kind of, right? Yeah, that, that's, that is possible, but I don't know. Like every, every inductive truth makes it appear that people have similar reasoning processes and there's no real evidence that they don't. And because of that, like all the evidence that they don't is completely arbitrary, completely skeptical. So because of that, we can assume that people do have do have the ability to reason. People do have minds. Now, obviously, gripers don't have the ability to reason, and leftists also don't have, don't have the ability to reason. But um, I think generally, most people who are not on like who are not like Voshites or tankies or gripers, everyone else generally has a rational mind, as as we can as we can observe through reality. Um. I can't observe or see or know about conscious experience at all. Sure. But we can see we can see people talking. We can see people sort of like through the way that they act. We can see that they act in similar ways to how we would act if we had this, this sort of uh, this conscious experience. It's so like the way that people talk or the way that people like, hmm, think about things and like stop and pause and think like all, all those sort of things. It's impossible for me to do so. Um, So one thing that I wonder is that like, I can use all sorts of a priori reasoning and I can gather all sorts of sense data about a brain, but I can't, but even given an infinite collection of data, nothing about that can say, um, nothing about that can tell me like, oh, well, there's a conscious experience happening here. Destiny's donations are making me trip. I keep thinking I'm getting a donation, but probably not because i don't get that many donations daniel i love you bro you're the only one that donates to me (laughs) i have no idea i have absolutely no way possible to know that i can't know that i just can't i can guess at it uh, that's true we can we can we can use inductive reasoning though and inductive reasoning is valid here because like it's completely arbitrary to say anything differently now psychology is very underdeveloped so we don't actually know that we can't observe consciousness even though it's something that seems immaterial even though it's something that seems like it's not the same sort of material as um even 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 though even though we know that it's not the same like matter as or same material as like matter or physical things but so there there is a distinction between the two and we know that because like matter matter acts mechanistically, but we can observe that our consciousness, we have free will. We can observe that when we introspect. So we, we know that it's a different sort of material. We know that it's a different sort of thing. Um, I shouldn't say material there because it's probably immaterial. Um, but, so we're trying to develop a science, which is what the purpose of psychology is, even though psychology is extremely corrupt right now. Um, we sort of develop sciences like psychology to try to analyze that and try to figure out things and under understand the process of consciousness better so we can still scientifically analyze it but de- like destiny's argument here is pure skepticism it's purely like oh i can't observe other people's minds so how do i know that consciousness doesn't exist or how do i know that consciousness yeah how how, how could i know that um co- yeah consciousness doesn't exist so i can't observe it through science so i don't know like i like oh it must be immaterial um when the real reason that you can do that is through direct observation. You can't come to a knowledge through pure skepticism by feeling like, huh, this might be true, this might not be true. You can't come to knowledge via those means. You have to observe something directly. And to understand consciousness, to understand why consciousness exists, you can observe your conscious mind. You can observe the actions that your mind takes and the emotions that you have and all those sort of things. And yeah, because... (laughs) Because of that, you can come to real knowledge about reality. I can speak with like, and and one of those such knowledges is is the fact that consciousness exists. Reason of probability, right? Like, I have a conscious experience. I don't know how. I don't know where it's contained. That it seems to arise from the brain. Other people have brains that seem to be similar to mine, so maybe they do. But like, let's say that you were to give me um, some. Let's say you were to give me some circuitry on a computer board. Okay, and these interacted with each other in a certain way. And you would tell me, you would ask me, like, is there a conscious experience happening there? I don't know. I would have absolutely no way of knowing the answer to that. And I don't think I can know. Um, but I seem to know that I have a conscious experience. It's, that seems to be the case. Um, I'd imagine other people would. But this seems to be something that 
it seems to be something that I accept the existence of it, right? I, I mean, I must accept the existence of my own experience. Um, and I seem to accept the existence of other people's conscious minds, but I have no way of, of really knowing that or no way of measuring it or no way of understanding it, becoming intimately aware of it, meaning experiencing it myself. Um, I can't collect sense data on other people's conscious experiences whatsoever. And I can't, um, I can't just like a priori reason like, oh, given these parts, a conscious experience will arise. So that means I must accept like uh, I must accept that there is. Some oh, hey, what up, Existence University? I didn't see your comment. It didn't appear in my chat either. Maybe you said a, you said a, you said an. N did you did you include the N word in there? Because I think I know that doesn't appear. Something that exists that I believe in that seems to be immaterial, or at least if it is material, it's material to another creature that has sense data that I have don't have access to, which for all intents and purposes might be, um, might be material. But, but it would be somebody else's like, yeah, but so, or, or I'm sorry, for all intents and purposes, that may as well be immaterial to me. If there's data out there to collect that I have no organ to receive, then it might, may as well be immaterial, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. So that's, so that's where I'm at right now. Consciousness mm -hmm. isn't immaterial though. We just don't understand it yet through science. But that's the thing is that like all of our science, the only thing that would change this maybe is if we could well like this is the purpose of psychology this is the purpose of developing a science to understand consciousness to understand the brain um now psychology is very underdeveloped because they don't even acknowledge the fact that consciousness exists that human beings are conscious uh, but once we can develop that we can develop methods to understand it better now it seems to be a different sort of material than the material world or it seems to be something different than the material world um But it's also like, it's also like you, anything that we can know about, anything that exists, we can have knowledge about. And if consciousness exists, we can obtain knowledge about it. Um, we only know how to do that directly to ourselves right now. We only know how to introspect at the moment um, because there's some complicated way that consciousness arises from the brain. As At least that's what it seems to be. Um, and we don't know how to see that in other people yet. Um, and that's that's sort of what the job of psychology is to develop and understand and see if maybe one day we can understand that could plug some well i don't know i it's inconceivable right now to even think about it though yeah i don't know a nervous system should well like here's the thing the thing is is that if i were to lay out like certain parts like if i were to, if i were to if i were to design like a circuit board and I were to have like, you know, certain pathways and certain like modules or whatever on the board. If I, I this is my beautiful circuit board, there you go. If I were to ask you a question about it, oh, hold on, we need a battery. Okay, if I were to ask you about this circuit board, I would say, okay, well, I have a lot of these different parts here. Is there a conscious experience happening? You, you, you will never be able to answer the question. Okay, this is weird though, because like to have a conscious experience with free will and the ability to make choices, um, like a human experience at least. I don't, I don't know about other animals. I don't know if other animals have free will or not. Um, I've seen evidence both directions. I've heard things both directions. I'm not, I, that's not something I claim to have any knowledge about. Um, but the thing about a circuit board, it's purely like material things. And there's no, there's no real way for a consciousness to arise out of that. Consciousness has a self-referential aspect about it where it's like it develop or hmm, let me think how to word this. Uh, like for something to be conscious, like it needs sort of. Hmm. So let's, let's, let's think about the circuit board, for example. Like the circuit board to take some actions for, in, of a material thing, for a material thing to take some actions, it needs some sort of programmer. It needs something to tell it what to do. That's like what a computer does. It, it needs some sort of programmer. But the mind, on the other hand, consciousness, it seems to program itself. Like the, the, the consciousness seems to self-program so you need some consciousness directing that action of the mind of the hardware i guess because the hardware would be like your mind your body those sort of things so you need some consciousness directing that action and um yeah so yeah you need some some consciousness directing that action and you don't really have that for a for a circuit board for a computer there's no the, nothing that a computer does goes against something that was programmed into it um, everything that a computer can do has to be programmed by some mind, some consciousness, some free being. 
um, some some being with consciousness, some being with free will. So there's there's an obvious distinction between those two things, and it seems weird for him to conflate the two. Right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that means. Like, I could put so in, for instance, like I could attach to this. Um, uh, maybe I can give it eyes and ears, and then like um, a finger to touch things, right? So maybe this thing can detect like um, heat and texture. Maybe it can see light. Oh, existence says why? Why do people watch Destiny or Nick at all? Um, I don't know. I I like I like listening to people who have different sort of opinions on these things for one, and also the reason I watch them on stream is entirely for clout. Entirely for clout. I'm trying to be popular, bro. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I think I think it's interesting to talk about these sort of things and give a given objectivist perspective on popular streamers and popular entertainers it waves in the visible spectrum um, maybe it can hear um, changes in air pressure for sound right so i can do this so let's say that i can process that data um, and then let's say that i can ask it questions about that data hey what is the wavelength of that light and it can spit out an answer or, hey um you know what is the frequency or or what is the timbre of this instrument like it could right is that a conscious experience like, no, that's not how human minds work. We don't like spit out random facts about it. Like, like it can be programmed to spit out certain things, but it doesn't know what any of those things mean. It doesn't know what any of those numbers mean because it hasn't formed concepts yet. It hasn't formed concepts of those things. Um, like the only reason those numbers have meaning is because we know what numbers mean. We form this concept of numbers um, so like the numbers for like wavelength and those sort of things, we form the concept of wavelength, we form all these concepts and we can have that be sort of a tool that performs measurements on those things and spits out numbers that it doesn't know about um, when it creates them. So we, we have the ability to know what the concepts we use mean. <laughs> like, does it have, does it have a conscious experience? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no way of knowing. I can't possibly know because like given all the parts of a human brain, right? Like it's we can completely have a part arbitrary to say it does though. And it goes against our entire understanding of how conscious beings behave. For storing memories, we can have a part for controlling um, uh, uh, emotions. Um, you know, we can have like our whole frontal lobe for wh whatever our sense of self and all that shit. You know, we can have the brainstem controlling, you know, certain things. Uh, like we can have all these parts and then we can have these parts interacting with each other so that like if I ask you a question, hey, what does your grandma look like? You know, maybe some series of neurons fires up and they interact with other senses and then you're able to speak out like an answer like, oh, like blah, 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 blah. But like, I don't know if there's an actual conscious experience happening. I don't even know what that means, right? Um, but like, I, but yeah, that's so, yeah, it's really, really weird. I don't know. Yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of this just shows our need for a better, um, for a better science of psychology to understand what's actually going on with consciousness. Um, now, consciousness is basically just our means of, of observing reality. It's our tool of observation. It's our faculty of awareness. Um, that'd be a basic definition of consciousness. Um, and we know that there's different kinds of consciousness and different degrees of consciousness. So like humans have a conceptual mind. We have the ability to form concepts about reality. Well, animals, they're simply perceptual. They see, they see percepts and they don't form concepts based on that. And, and then, uh, plants like they're simply sensory. They only have sensory. They only have the ability to feel sensations. I still don't understand why your response to Marty doesn't still work. What's the difference between a brain and a mind? Um, I don't know. I'd have to go back and think. I think most of my response were Marty, to Marty were good. It wasn't a Marty argument that convinced me. Um, it was just some of the things that I said to Marty. I started to think more about um, later on, um, that um, that like kind of moved me off of the the idea that like, I don't know. I guess consciousness and a brain are. But yeah, psycho psychoepistemology is a good form of uh, thinking about psychology as well because as, as Existence University brought up, br he brought it up in the comments. Yeah, psychoepistemology is great. It's basically. Um, figuring out how people's subconsciouses work in these sort of um i might not i might butcher this um sort of how they come at the world this their methods of thinking about the world their how the autonomatized values that they hold the autonomatized uh the automatized i don't know i don't know how to pronounce that word i try that so much the automatized uh epistemological methods that they use 
right, seem to be two fundamental. I do need to watch where Ben's swinging. Really different things. They see. They seem to be. But yeah, I'm not sure. Do you believe it's an immaterial thing, but emerges from a material brain? That seems to be the case, that it comes from a, a material brain. Yeah, I agree with this. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, weird. Destiny seems to have, like, good, like, initial thoughts about a lot of these things, but a lot of his explanations are really bad and ultimately result in skepticism. Like, Destiny has a decent understanding of certain philosophical issues, and he's not terrible on a lot of these, th these things. But he's just not, he's not entirely there. He still has that premise of skepticism that he needs to get over. And I mean, that's why I like watching Destiny. Like, he's not terrible. Now, he's, he has problems, of course. Um, but that's due to his skepticism. And if he could resolve that, I think he'd be a lot better. You could just bite the bullet and say, yes, a circuit might have a pseudo-consciousness. Yeah, sure, but like, what does that mean then? Like, or, or what could have a conscious, or what couldn't have a conscious? So, for instance, like, here is something that I thought about. Here was like a weird thought experiment that I thought about. Um, I, I think a couple months ago, I said this on stream. Um, wow, Skater, well, pie, well, happy ten months. I love you too, buddy. Uh, we'll check Drake's new album out soon. Soon, TM. Um, so, I don't think. Why is your title a sad face? Because I realize that Nuance Pro is a bad faith actor who's never going to talk to me again because he realizes he was way the fuck out of his league when we talked before. It makes me sad that I did my research on stream. I should have hidden it from him so he wouldn't have seen how utterly clueless he was. Um. So none of the none of the well, to my knowledge, I don't think any of the underlying structures of my brain, or even my brain as a whole, are aware of an overlaid conscious experience. I, I don't even know how we begin to see if they were, but it's. I, I think it's reasonable to assume that taking out small sections of the brain, that they themselves wouldn't have the wherewithal to know like, oh shit, like you just took me out of like that self-awareness. Like, oh no, like break, take me back to my conscious experience. Like that just doesn't seem to be the case. That like smaller parts of your brain don't seem to be aware of like the overall emergent property, you know? Um. So something that I kind of wondered is that like, if we imagine something that has a structure, right? So information or memories can be stored in a certain area. Um, maybe we have like, um, like we, we've got like an immune system that like fights things. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe we've got like um, parts of our brain that are responsible for like communication. Um, like we can have all of these different parts of the brain, but in a way these are kind of like parts of society too, right? Like libraries can store information or memories or even parts of the internet archives oh can trash God. collectors or doctors can like clean up society. Um, you know, we've got the internet for like information processing or communication or telephones. All of these parts technically exist in a society. Like who's to say that Oh my God, wait, there's not for, like on, on like in, in an entire country. This is my drawing of North America. There you go. <laughs> It's a tornado. Who's to say that for a country, there isn't some overlying conscious experience that's happening on top of an entire, um, on top of an entire. This is how people form terrible philosophies. Like this right here, this sort of rationalism, this, hmm, these sort of things seem similar in this way. So now let's connect them. Let's draw all these connections between them. Like things are similar. Things are connected in certain ways, but to like, say that oh we're gonna fit it into this box of like yo consciousness is like this we also see these sort of things in society selectively focus on these sort of these certain things and this is the unique ability of human beings is to selectively focus um um i guess of animals as well to of perceptual beings and conceptual beings we can selectively focus on things um and then ignore the rest, ignore all the stuff that contradicts it. And then we can form this rationalistic system of like, oh, society is conscious. Oh, there's a collective mind. And like, there's literally nothing in reality that provides any sort of evidence of that. He's purely doing this in his head. He's not looking at anything in reality when he's thinking about this. This is, this is, the, this is the big problem with Destiny. His, his skepticism leads him to complete fucking rationalism. It's terrible. like nation like who's to say that 
there, there isn't some sort of conscious experience that's emergent out of like a group of people. And if there was, how would we even fucking know? Um, who is to say that the Earth doesn't have a conscious experience? Yeah, for yeah, that's yeah. Maybe maybe the entire yeah th that there could be like multiple levels of of extract of abstraction. Because the thing was, was that if if there was like a higher level conscious thing that existed on top of everybody, it seems that we would have no way individually of perceiving that we're a part of that, right? It doesn't seem to be the case. Um, because the under Yeah, but if you can't perceive something, if you can't, like, if there's no way of observing something, it doesn't exist. If something can't be observed, it doesn't exist. And if there's something that you can't see in reality, if there's something that's not part of reality because you can't observe it, that means it doesn't exist. Or there's absolutely no reason to think about it. Or there's like it's completely arbitrary to say that something that there's no evidence for, that there's no reason to believe in exists. There's nothing you can do with that claim. I can't like there's nothing I can say like, oh, I'm gonna refute it like this. Like, no, I can like you're just making shit up now. It's complete it's utter bullshit. Underlying part properties of our brain or the underlying parts of our brain don't seem to understand that they're part of a conscious experience. Um, so who's to say that a greater one doesn't exist on, on top of us? Holy shit. Oh shit, Tiago's actually right though. Proto fascist destiny. You believe Holy shit. Things, yeah, he's know. coming to your side, dog. You fucking fascist. He's got destiny now. Out of souls or any of that shit. I'm not interested in that. So the emergent thing that comes out of this aggregate is immaterial. Is immaterial the right descriptor of this phenomenon? Well, it seems like if there's something that exists and I don't have any way of perceiving it or knowing about it, but I assume that it exists anyways, it seems like that would be the definition of immaterial. How could that not be an immaterial thing? Yeah, but we literally perceive, we perceive our conscious experience. We can easily perceive it. I mean, like to believe in determinism, to not believe in free will, or to not believe in consciousness requires such an obvious evasion. You literally see it in every waking moment of your life. Because consciousness has the ability to observe itself through introspection. No? When is the composition? Sometime in the next week. Every time you ask when I'm going to grade the composition challenge, I put it off two more days. This episode of Mindscape discusses the exact topic. Can oh, you shoot, define. I got a donation. Daniel, why did it not read it out? Oh wait, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I thought that was me. That's Conscious just experience? Me. No, I can't at all. Um, oh no, existence exists. Just subscribe. It seems oh, to be shit. dope. Like in, in, in indefinable from somebody that has one. I mean, like. Without, did, like, it almost it seems to be foundational. Like, I don't know if I could explain a conscious experience without using the word conscious experience, right? Well, you can observe. Oh shit! There's an ad. Fuck! What is it? To healthcare workers of every type, everywhere, who are making a difference. Does it make you feel any different about normal nihilism versus objectivism? Like maybe there's possibly an immaterial conscious experience. He said objectivism. Like, oh, he said no, objectivism. Really oh, he said the word. Ah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so that's that's that that's that part of the video. Um, and then existence university wanted me to get up a uh, actual definition of psychoepistemology because I think I probably butchered the definition. I was mostly right looking at this. Um, but yeah, psychoepistemology is a study of man's cognitive processes from the aspect of the interaction between the conscious mind and the automatic functions of the subconscious. So I was essentially right, but I just didn't say it in as precise and as fucking good of a way as Ayn Rand, which <laughs> it takes a lot to be able to, uh, to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here about how the, how the mind works. And this is basically Rand's way of analyzing psychology and how the mind functions how a man thinks um and that's that that is what psychology should be based on that's how psychology should be based on. what that that's that's what based psychology is based on guys but here let's end